this work this month. Um, I feel really fortunate to be here. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about where I'm coming from, how I make my work, the people who are inspiring me right now, and uh, what I've been making here at Fort Missoula. And if you can't hear me, let me know, and I'll use the microphone, but I'll try to project instead. Um, so I'm interested in how objects and ideas transform through time and memory. What happens to a photograph, a postcard, or a piece of furniture imbued with memory that becomes detached from the holder of that memory? How does living with an object or in a space change its significance over time? Um, so I'm going to talk about that, but first a little bit about where I'm from. I grew up moving around uh, a little bit from Minnesota to Iowa to California and back and forth between those places and uh, moving will really force you to take stock of the things uh, that are around you, that are important, what gets lost, what might be important but you don't want to carry it halfway across the country. Um, so I think that's kind of what initially sparked my interest in everyday objects, um, things like what brand of face soap you use, uh, the seltzer can that you keep in your fridge. Um, I'm interested in the way that we think about those things when they've become outdated or old or lost, um, and the things that end up in antique malls or out of state sales that belong to someone else, people's photographs, pirate pools, blankets. Um, so a few examples of, of paint paintings I've been making recently with things from both my own house um, my mom's house, old, old stuff of mine. Um, I live in New York right now, and that's also something that is really inspiring to me. I'm seeing advertising all over the place all the time, and I really love deli advertising. Um, <laughs> I love it. There is, you always see these like cutout images of sandwiches or products that you are supposed to be able to find at a given deli. They're usually on these really bright backgrounds. Um, they're often in like a grid like this, or they'll be layered on top of each other. The design, this is from a Polish Shelly in Brooklyn. Um, the design is really cool. It's super abundant and colorful. And sometimes you also get these old hand-painted deli signs um, that are really beautiful and, and will be like juxtaposed with these newer, like digitally created images. Here's another example. Um, the other thing about living in New York is that space is expensive, as I hear you also know in Missoula. Um, so, and since my work is about home and space, I'll show you my studio home space. I work in my apartment, um, usually at like the dining room table where there's a lot of light or in a converted closet in my living room and, or in a corner of my bedroom. Um, and so that's one of the things that's really influenced how I work. Um, I have a small space, so I work on paper most often. It's easy to store and um, that is part of the reason I make a lot of what I make. Um, so, a couple more examples of some works on paper. Um, more objects from around my house. Um, a still life from the internet. So to make these paintings, I'm usually collecting a lot of paper ephemera. Um, and it's things like old magazines. This is, I think, a family circle from the 50s. Um, things like cooking pamphlets I'm really interested in. Um, finding like a color scheme from an old ad. Um, old photographs. Um, I love this lady in her kitchen. She's got like Elvis. Uh, um, so I kind of, I'm always collecting these things. Um, oh, I'll look at like Zillow ads and see kind of the mishmash of things that people have in their houses and they get photos taken to sell them. Um, 
So I'll gather these photos and um, when I'm ready to make something, I'll just like pull a bunch of stuff out, see what kind of relates to what I'm thinking of, maybe a color scheme, maybe an object, like a chair or something I want to represent. And then um, make drawings of those, combine them together, and then create these either like kind of abstract spaces or rooms. Um, in these are gouache paintings. Um, and this is a risograph print um, of an imagined space. Um, so riso is another part of my process that I'll explain a little bit because it's different and I love it. Um, riso is a printer. It was originally made for office use. Um, but artists use them a lot because of the way you can get a really saturated color palette and the kind of like grainy, textured, almost handmade quality that um, happens because of these printers. Um, they have a soy ink drum in the middle, and when the paper goes through, a rice paper screen around the drum has an image burned onto it, like a silk screen. The paper goes through, the ink gets pushed out through the screen, and you have an image like this. So you do one color at a time. And um, they, there are a bunch of Rizzo studios around Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm trying to, um, I'm actually gonna get a new Rizzo this fall and, and move it in my brother's basement. But for a while I had this broken one in my bedroom and um, it was really sad to wake up and look at it every morning and know that it's my brother. But it was, it was a nice idea. Um, this is an example of some Rizzo work I made, a postcard, um, and you can see this fun grainy quality, um, it's a scanned um, image from a cooking pamphlet and then color that I photoshopped around it. Um, this is a drawing from a series I did where I asked people about particular memories of uh, food they ate at home, either kind of currently or in the past. Um, and it's Rizzo printed. This is another one from that series. Um, this is another photo postcard. Um, and part of what's really fun about Rizzo is, is using a limited color palette. So this was printed using only blue and orange. And um, so the effect you get with the photo can be really um, cool and interesting. This is um, some work by other Rizzo artists. Um, the community in New York is really fun and exciting to be a part of. Um, this is Secret Rizzo Club in Queens. This is um, from a book of paper dolls and backgrounds for them by a collective called Social Species. Um, I really think their work is great. This is the same book of paper dolls. Um, and they really combine like photo and drawing in an interesting way that I like. Um, this is another print. Um, it's by Color Code, I think they're in Canada. Um, and this is an example of some like illustration work um, that's been drawn in colored pencil and then Rizzo printed. This is um, an artist named Adriana Lozano Roman. Um, so I, this is work I've been looking at and I'm really inspired by. Um, so during the pandemic, I lost access to the Rizzo Studios I was able to use um, in New York and I was thinking, how can I still be a printmaker and work at home and not leave my house? Um, so I started doing wine oak printmaking um, and this is an example of work I made um, during that time. Similar process where I was um, considering a really object of pattern um, to create an imagined space. And this is another example of that. Um, and I love that process, but it was really, really time consuming. Um, and so I did that for a while, but have been going back to painting recently to save myself a little time. And, um, and make some different work. So um, I'm back on painting and will be riso printing in the fall again.
Um, so going back to nostalgia, um, I'm really interested in why we feel nostalgic for different times, places we maybe haven't been. Um, and I'm reading a book by Svetlana Boyd called The Future of Nostalgia. Um, it's really helping me work through those ideas. Um, and she has a conception of nostalgia in two ways um, that she calls restorative nostalgia and um, reflective nostalgia. So she says, I'm quoting her, restorative nostalgia protects the absolute truth while reflective nostalgia calls it into question. Reflective nostalgia explores ways of inhabiting many places at once and imagining different time zones. It loves details, not symbols. So I like that conception um, because I think it's important to have a critical way to think about nostalgia as opposed to a dismissive attitude about it. I think it's really easy to say, oh, nostalgia is something we kind of use to distract ourselves or gloss over things that um, maybe we don't like about the past. Um, but it's also something that a lot of people experience and seems to really be prevalent in our culture right now. So um, I like thinking about it this way of being in different time zones by looking at the details of something. Um, and for me, that's taking out these old objects or um, combining them with newer objects um, from everyday life. Um, I think this is also important because of our kind of place in the internet world right now. Um, it's really ruling our lives and it kind of feels like everything is catalogable or um, in some ways standardized on the internet and that's kind of making time feel like it's going by really fast. Things feel clearly a little bit unstable in the world right now. Um, and so dealing with physical subjects, dealing with old things, I think feels really relevant. Um, I'm a millennial on the younger side of my generation and so I can kind of remember a time before the internet but not um, it's never been part of my adult life to live that way. So I think there's also something very interesting about um, thinking about the time before that um, as we're kind of increasingly speeding towards living online. Um, so switching over to a few more artists whose work I'm thinking about right now. This is Shauna McAndrew. She makes a lot of um, paintings of women in domestic spaces in their rooms, in their houses. Um, and I love how they're really deeply patterned and detailed. Um, there's a lot of like, food, kind of everyday situations, and I really appreciate that about her work. I'm also thinking about illustration and illustrators from the 50s and 60s. Um, this is Mac Connor, and I really love the way that he deals with space. Um, works like this. And then um, this is Stephanie Chi. She makes um, ceramic groceries that are about, <laughs> yeah, they're about Asian American identity and also nostalgia um, and growing up around um, Asian American grocery stores in the kind of 80s and 90s. Um, so her work is also, I think, really fabulous and um, inspires me to make more grocery work. <laughs> um, so now we are at Fort Missoula, and um, this is a painting which are in my studio, which you'll see after this. Um, I applied for this residency because I spent a fair amount of time in Montana growing up. Um, my dad grew up in Helena. My grandparents still live there, and um, I haven't spent that much time here as an adult, but it, Montana really occupied a place in my mind that was nostalgic and really interesting. Um, and I think that that's not uncommon. Um, Montana has a history of a lot of people really imagining new lives here. Um, white people moving westward, expanding to Montana. Um, and so I wanted to come and just like be in this place and 
um, see how that felt and explore Missoula and um, explore these objects. So I got here, I made a few paintings of the chairs in my studio. These are totally fabulous. <laughs> um, and then I got to start looking at the collections. I walked around the museum and then um, Emma also helped me look in the basement in the main building and pull some things up. Um, so these are some things I pulled up and um, I was picking out just like yummy packaging, cool colors, things I found interesting. Um, I have more some here actually. These like Highlander beer cones, um, more awesome milk packaging. This um, peanut jar has a grinder in the top and you can chop your peanuts. Um, so I brought up a bunch of these objects and I took photos of them. I took some phone photos um, for reference and then took some film photos and I'm planning on using the film photos to make some Rizzo uh, books and um, prints this fall. So. Um, so then I've been making these paintings and um, arranging different objects, looking at them, looking at photos of them, and um, combining them into these kind of abstract spaces. Um, so first I'll take a sketch and um, kind of organize it out, um, and then start painting. And I use a um, case for making watercolors highly recommend. They're these super pigmented um, watercolor paints um, that help you get these really bright colors. Um, so that's been my process here and I've been working on these two paintings and a few more that you'll see downstairs um, and this week planning on making one even bigger one. So that's been a real treat um, to have this space and be able to make larger work and um, explore the museum and explore these things that are artifacts of this place. Okay. <laughs>